So Lars, we're here at the Utility Expo checking out the new ECR25. Now this is fully electric, huh? Yes, it's fully electric and uh, I think I would like you to operate the machine and give me your honest feedback. Absolutely, yeah, so, I'd love to. So I actually own several of these smaller excavators. Yes. I have an ECR18 and then I actually have an ECR58. Yeah. So wh where does this fall as far as the size goes? Uh, you have a 1.8 ton machine, yep. so that's a 2.7 ton machine, so it's an ECR25, so it's a 2.5 ton, but it's a little bit heavier, it's actually a 2.7 ton machine, so it's a little bit bigger machine of, than, than what, what you what have. I have now. So it has more reach, more lifting, okay. uh, but else, everything is the same. Hmm. Okay, well I'm excited to try it out, you know, it's, from the outside it looks exactly like a, just a regular yes, diesel yes, unit, yes. right? So, exactly, so what's, yeah. what's the big what's the big selling point on it? What, what's the what's so special about this unit? Yes, uh, it's a zero emission, fully battery driven mini excavator. So you have uh, three hours continuously runtime, or with all the idling time because these machines have a lot of idling. It's between four to six hours. And that's numbers I've seen from real operators and real applications when we had test machines out here, and. Um, Else the machine is doing exactly what the mini excavator need to do. It's digging, lifting, carrying stuff. I've seen people having a steel plate wedged in with the bucket and the dozer plate, moving it around to cover a manhole up. Yeah. And uh, well, the great thing about this unit, fully electric, you can run this indoors, not have to worry oh, about yes, emissions. Yes, yes. Nothing. You know, in a lot of the applications that I personally use my machines for, yeah. we've had to use them indoors. You know, so we have to oh, have air. I didn't know. Yes. Yeah. So that, that's kind of a neat. Uh, so I think it's. Thing. First of all, the machine is doing exactly what a diesel equivalent machine is doing. In few point of reach, lifting capacity, buckets. Uh, you can run a brake on the machine or any hydraulic attachments. You have X1, X3 for the auxiliary hydraulics. Uh, so it's doing exactly the same beside no fumes, no emissions, tremendous reduction in noise and vibration. Now, you said we can get about three to four hours of runtime, yeah. continuous runtime. Yes. How long does it take to charge it? Uh, if you hook it up on a 120 volt network, your standard household outlet, it's uh, 12 hours. So it would be a nice overnight, overnight. charge. Okay. No, no, uh, no, no. Does it have a built-in charger? Can I just plug it in or do I have to have a separate charger for it? Uh, the machine is coming with a charging cable. Okay. So you plug in the charging cable to a 120 or 110 volt outlet. You plug it into the machine. You push a button in the machine activating charging and then you walk away and charge overnight. Hmm. Okay. So. Uh, the other nice thing is also you can charge this machine in any electric vehicle charge station. You know, in the parking lots where they have a oh yeah, the char like yeah. A parking lots where they have electric uh, stations the or electric charge cars. Stations, yeah. So you go in there, charge it there. Now, now in a quick charge scenario like that, how long will it take to charge it? Uh, if you charge it then on 240 volt, like we have over there on a beam solar charger, it's half the time. You go oh, from really? six to uh, from sorry from 12, 12 to, six. to six hours. Hmm. Wow. And you're working on improving this further. Okay. Yeah. So it's always, a, uh, yeah, that's, that's still pretty good. Yeah. All right. Well, why don't you walk me through it? Yes. Jump on in. Uh, first step here, here's the battery main switch. Okay. So turn it on. Then you turn on the ignition like on any other excavator, like in so. your machines. Uh, one warning. We have a seatbelt warning in this there. Okay. So I recommend turn on the seatbelt because oh, you will have a you very gotta, annoying gotta noise. about things. Yeah. And you know, it's good, better to wear a seatbelt. You know, if you yeah. roll over the machine, yeah, you want exactly. to stay inside. All right, so we're on. Uh, on the display, you see anything there? Nothing right now, it's, oh, it's starting up. So it's starting up. So the computers need to communicate to each other. Okay, so it's showing, uh, hit the button on the, on the joystick. Do okay, I... on the right hand joystick, you hit the button one time. The electric motor is on. Oh wow. And uh, I barely can hear it from here. You probably can hear more motor noise from the electric yeah, motor inside motor the cab. Then I, can... I think what I'm hearing is the pump, right? Yeah, it's electric motor running the hydraulic pump, yeah. yeah. And again, it's an electric motor, battery pack, replacing the engine. And the electric motor is running the hydraulic pump and everything else is all hydraulic driven the same way as on your ECR 18 or the five ton excavator you have. Okay. So tr try to run it a little bit. Okay, let me give it a shot. Okay, so, what, so Lars, quick, yes. I got a quick question for you, Lars. What is this set up as right now? Is this on backhoe uh, controls or excavator controls? Uh, you can easily switch between backhoe and excavator. It's simply you go into the display, hit the menu button, 
and as right at the start you can switch or change oh, between so backhoe and excavator real easily, huh? yes very easily Perfect. so no valve you need, don't need to search for a valve turn the valve over so if you have operators running uh, some on excavator some in backhoe mode they simply ch jump in change the mode and off on they the go on the keypad just change it yes, and it's, it's ready very to go. easy okay and uh, this one is set up for excavator i believe you're okay with excavator uh, I'm yeah i'm good with excavator perfect all right well let's give it a shot it's so i got to start it up right here yeah there Wow, it actually shows the It's the amazing. I'm standing out here, I barely can hear the machine is running. Yeah, no, this is great. Yeah. You know, that actually makes it a lot easier when you're operating, you're trying to, you know, listen to the guy on the ground, what's happening below you. Yes, exactly. Now you can actually hear him. And that's the typical application with the mini excavators. Usually you have people around you yeah. watching out for water mains or yeah, exactly. fiber optic yeah. cables or uh, guiding or they need to put something into the trench or hole you have digged. So, um, yeah. No, no, I, I can see the, the real world application yeah, for this, yeah. not only indoors, but outside when, when it's oh, actually yes, critical yes, work. Yes, yes, when it, yes. You got to be real, real careful about what you're digging and how yeah, you're digging. Yeah, so yeah. this is pretty cool. Well, I'm going to give it a shot. Yeah. And if you want to speed up a little bit, there's a dial on the right hand side. You can get the RPM up. I recommend to work between 14 and 1800 RPM, but uh, all operators are different. Some so if, if, I, if I run it at 1400 RPM, do the batteries last a little longer? How much of longer? Course. You don't need to run full RPM. I think it's going up to 2200, but you're only burning electricity because you don't need the full power all the time. And that's a surprise for you. Did you hear it? Yeah, I heard that, yeah. So, no, the electric motor will turn off soon. But okay. uh, move a joystick and you keep digging. Okay, well, let me give it a shot. Oh, it has load sense hydraulic. Yeah. So you get the power when you need it. That, that's actually pretty impressive. Yeah. That was pretty hard ground right there. Yes. That's compacted base and is actually going through it pretty easily. You know, and I only have the RPMs at 1400 RPMs. So there, there's actually quite a bit more power available. I just have it at 1400. Yes. And if. You always have people who want to run a full throttle, but it's so hard to train them. You actually don't need to run full throttle. Yeah. You know? Let me, let me give it a little more power. Let me see what it does. Sure. So we're all the way up at 1800 right now. Yeah. Wow. There's no, no hesitation at no, all. No, nothing. That's yeah. pretty impressive. And that's the same feedback I got from the test operators on the test machines. It's amazing what the machine can do. That's actually pretty impressive, Lars. Yeah. The nice thing is the electric motor turns off as soon as you raise the armrest. The moment, so you can jump out, do some work at the side. You jump back in, push the button on the joystick, armrest down, now, as long as and you off the, you go. As long as you keep the, the, the ignition on, right? Keep the ignition on. There's no need to turn off the ignition if you're out of the machine for 5, 10, 15 minutes. Okay. So on the diesel machine... On Go a ahead, diesel sir. machine, you have all this idling time, you know, uh, and you know, um, operating hours are defined by engine runtime. And you have all this idling. So I believe um, a 10 year old machine running, uh, uh, I need to do the calculation again. Uh, this many hours, let's say a 10 year old machine has 10,000 hours, a diesel machine. This one doing the same work will only probably have six or 7,000 hours on the machine. Because wow. this machine is only counting operating hours when the electric motor is running. Oh, wow. As soon as the electric motor is off, which happens automatically if you don't use the machine for 10, 20 seconds, the electric motor shuts off. It's not counting operating hours. It helps you also um, tremendously with uh, your maintenance. You know, well, your maintenance gonna, uh, is based on uh, operating hours. I was going to ask you about the maintenance. So, so since this machine is electric, what does the maintenance look like on a machine like this? Uh, Thing from this, you don't need to care about any engine-related maintenance. 
No engine oil, no radiator, no coolant. Do we have no to grease the electric motor or anything? Or no, there's a brushless, mm -hmm. a main, absolutely maintenance-free electric motor in there. That's a good question, and uh, there's nothing to maintain that. The only maintenance you have is your hydraulic system, cabin air filter, and keep the machine creased. Wow. So uh, it cuts down on maintenance by by half, then, really? Uh, I didn't crunch the numbers, but uh, I'm sure you don't need to deal with stuff. Yeah. So really, what we're talking about. No less maintenance, you know, no fuel consumption, no noise, no noise. You can work wow. in noise sensitive areas like around the hospital, a kindergarten, a school, on a golf course. Well, I'm going to be honest with you, you know, I, I was a little leery about it, being, being that it's an electric machine. I've yeah. never ran one before, yeah. but right now, you know, going through some of this harder material, this, this compacted road base, it dug right through and it didn't even stutter. You know, I, I turned it up a little bit and it just dug right through it. Wow. It didn't even Thank slow you. down. Yeah, yeah. Pretty impressive. Yeah. Well, I love it. That's Lars. what we try to do at Volvo. I, I, I yeah. love it. I love it. Quick question. What's that little lever there for? Is that for a breaker? Oh, no. That's to change between a, a, a crapple mode oh. or a breaker mode. So you cra if you so put it, a crapple that, bucket on, so you can use the oh. bucket cylinder to rotate your crapple or open and close your crapple. Okay. And then with X1, X3, you rotate your crapple. Gotcha. Okay. Well, very cool, Lars. Well, thanks for uh, showing me the machine. Hey. I love it. I, I'm actually well, very impressed. Thank you very, very much impressed. to give it a try. And yeah. uh, thank you for your good feedback. Hey, thank you. Thank Appreciate you. It.